All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our uh, meeting for December 7th, 2021. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. I'll ask everyone to please turn your cell phones off or place them on vibrate. And I'll remind everyone of the declaration of pecuniary interest. It, we had no uh, written uh, declarations. If anybody has any declarations, they can do that now. Uh, if not, we'll carry on with the meeting. Okay. I have uh, minutes here from our council meeting on November 16th. I'll look for a motion to approve and adopt those minutes. Moved by Councillor Webb. Seconder, Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move right into delegations and I'm gonna ask the delegations to please uh, try and uh, abide by the time of 10 minutes allotted. Um, our first delegation here is Ian McKenzie uh, with regards to affordable housing. Uh, good morning, Ian. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, seeing me today. Yeah, uh, welcome. Thank you. I'll let you dive right into your root okay. here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. Is that working? Yeah. Okay. So the purpose of, of my, uh, let me go right to my next page here. Um, purpose of this, of this delegation is it's really about affordable housing. And what I mean by that, it, it has a lot of different meanings. I mean, even for people who have decent jobs, affordable housing is difficult these days. Um, but we also have people who don't have great jobs and it's even harder. Um, you know, I've got nieces and nephews and, you know, that are, I, I don't know when they're going to be able to get their own place, whether it's rent or buy. Uh, and the other piece is, uh, uh, I think, looking to the future, the climate change, different things that are happening in our, in our world, I believe that this is going to get worse. So there's the specific purpose of this, there's a lot of things going on, but the specific purpose of this conversation is really to explore with with you all uh, some concepts and ideas to see what what we you know what you might have been thinking about as a council uh, because I don't I don't know and um, and what what we might be able to influence in the way of change uh, specifically I'm thinking about the rural area um, I live uh, I have 60 acres north of town uh, and uh, of course, the bylaws and so on of, of the RU, you, um, you know, constrain what I might be able to do in terms of uh, having other people live here on the land. And, uh, and so there are different ideas, there are different ways that that can be done. Um, and part of part of the concern I have is that I think if we don't, if we don't be proactive about it, we will end up with with more illegal uses and uh, squatting and so on that may may be happening a little bit now but I think it's going to get it's going to get worse and I also think that there's an opportunity here uh, for for the township uh, if we can be a, a leader in uh, enabling more people to live on the land and and set up small businesses small farms enterprises uh, different different um, different things that, that bring people to the, to the community, put money into the community, um, put tax base, tax revenue into the community. Uh, it could be an opportunity for us. And uh, that, that's, that's sort of the context for, for what I want to talk about. Um, the, the current status, I think I've touched on this, but across the whole country, we've got an affordable housing crisis. That's not a surprise to anybody. Uh, and I think I think we do have. I did speak with Councillor Webb uh, a week or two ago about this topic uh, briefly, and uh, there we do see some signs of unmanaged land use, as I would call them. That I, I don't know what else you might call them, camping or or um, I don't think they're permanent settlements. But the, these these things are are of concern to to residents, and I do think it's going to get worse. I do think we're going to see. Uh, a lot more immigration into our area because I think in, in the world of climate change, our area is going to be a desirable area. It's going to still have water. It's still going to have a, a moderate climate. It's not going to be flooded. It's not likely to be um, heated out. Um, 
So we do have some assets in this in this area. We've got uh, plenty plentiful rural properties, uh, land like mine, which is not very good farmland at all. I, I pity the settlers that drew the short straw in this place. Uh, it had to be really difficult. Uh, but uh, there there are ways to grow um, grow food on this land. They did it before. We're doing it now. Uh, and there's certainly uh, places that people could live on this land, uh, more so than what we are right now. So my premise really is managed proactively. I think this is an opportunity uh, for us, a potential opportunity. Um, and so the, the proposition, I guess, is that is that we think about think about being a leader in this in this area. Uh, I'm not specifically talking about the um, the town, uh, but there's there's certainly nothing. I have I, I just am exploring the rural in in this conversation. There's there's equal com conversations that could be uh, ha happening about. Uh, about in the in the town in the villages, um, so I guess what I'm what I'm hoping to achieve um, myself is to influence and find out what you know what do we need to do what needs to change, um, both within our own township and our own thinking, but also what are other constraints? I don't I don't know what that is. I'm exploring that. You know, what, it, it, are we constrained by what the county says we can do and can't do? Uh, are there any other are there other jurisdictional roadblocks that we would have um, to, to do something different? Uh, and then if I move into some of the different options, some of the, these are some of the things that are happening uh, around us. Co-housing, it, it is a concept. I, I did join a group in Peterborough for about a year um, that's, that's building, they're, they're ending up building a, an apartment block. Uh, they're not there yet, but they've been at it for quite a while trying to get the, the model going. And that's going to be a unit with about, uh, about 30 units, but it's really intended for people who have money. It's going to be expensive. It, it's not going to be for low income people at all. Uh, but there are, there are co-housing developments, which is shared ownership, uh, individual ownership of, of pieces or houses or, or condos, if you will. Usually it uses a condominium model. Um, and then there are other, other types of, of uh, models around, um, certainly single owner, multiple units um, by somebody like me could, could you know, bring forward a proposal and build a, a, a block of units that uh, may or may not be supported by CMHC if there's a if there's a, a component of that that's low income. And cooperative housing models also exist. Um, what I'm wondering is um, whether there are, I don't know uh, if there are any of these operating right now, cooperatives in, in uh, Havelock uh, Township. Are you aware of any that are, that are uh, operating right now? No, it was a, the partnership we did with Peterborough Housing and the um, Seniors Affordable Housing is, I guess, right. kind of one of those models. But uh, yeah. no, I'm not aware of anything uh, um, off the top of my head, anyways. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, and there, you know, they do exist in in other jurisdictions. I didn't think there were any. I, I was aware of the, the seniors um, place, and um, anyway, the, there there are there are ways of doing it that are being used other places. Um, and I suppose the question, not necessarily for for you technically, because I can go to staff and, and get uh, and get answers to, you know, the, the current bylaws and that sort of thing and do that sort of research. But I'm more talking to you because I'm, I'm looking ahead to what could we do differently to promote, you know, uh, managed, um, greater managed uh, use of the land. Um, and uh, and give people opportunities. Um, so I, I don't know whether anybody has any response or any thoughts. Um, you know, there's obviously the NIMBY syndrome, which is always alive and well around us. Um, people, you know, are afraid of the unknown. And uh, are, are there uh, like what are the impediments to to doing something different in our rural lands? Okay. All right. Are you finished there? Yeah. Okay. If you could take that off, I could see everyone. Uh, um, right now, I can only see a few. So thank you very much. Uh, 
yeah, good presentation. It's nice to hear that you're uh, thinking outside the box. Um, a lot of these things, you know, have been discussed over the years as far as, uh, and it's big at the county right now, as far as affordable housing, most of these new subdivisions coming in aren't affordable housing. They're, um, yeah. they're, they're full-fledged houses. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, but there is places around us that are, uh, that are working on this and trying to come up with, you know, tiny homes and things like that. So, um, you know, we, we introduced granny suites or granny flats to the township a couple of years ago, which is going to help a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we have a lot of guidelines that we have to work around with the province, the province, as far as um, places to grow. And they kind of <clears throat> tell us, uh, you know, our, we kind of have to work around what they're saying that we can do. Um, but that being said, um, these are the types of things that they need to hear too. So right. I would really recommend that you, uh, you know, work with staff and see, you know, see what we can do. Cause you'd be surprised there's a lot we can't do, but, uh, but that sure. doesn't mean we can't get something rolling, but, uh, I'll open it up to council. See if they have any questions or comments, uh, um, council. Councilor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to thank Ian for his presentation here today. Um, as he said, we spoke about a week ago about this um, this topic. Um, I like it uh, just from my point of view in terms of, I think he referenced it uh, for years now, we've been dealing with this illegal camping issue and other kind of squatting issues uh, in the township. I don't know if um, something like this would uh, alleviate that. I tend to think it might, but... Um, the, the bigger thing for me is uh, I'd like uh, us as a council to be more proactive in terms of some of these these problems. I think quite often we're reactionary, so we wait for the problem to happen and react to it. And I think with uh, what Ian's brought us here, in terms of he said a growing problem, maybe in the future, maybe if we address it now, we can maybe get ahead of the game and uh, alleviate some of these problems for the uh, cottagers and people out in the township in the future. So thank you very much for your presentation, Ian. Okay, is there any other uh, questions or comments from council? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Jarreau. Well, through you, Mayor Martin, thank you very much. I applaud Mr. McKinsey for his efforts in the, uh, the affordable housing crisis. There's many, many avenues that uh, have been taken, tried, we've had and tried to take. I think, uh, Staying on the positive side, there's always things we can do. And the, on the negative side, it is challenging for rural townships because we don't have any transportation. So we have mm -hmm. two types of, of housing. You mentioned it yourself, Mr. McKenzie, that we, have, we need affordable housing for those that work and we need affordable housing that I hope for those that are unfortunate enough not to have a job. And for those in either case, we have a transportation problem. So we need to start laying the bricks for that transportation problem and bring it in on affordable housing. But I do thank you for your presentation and I applaud you for your efforts. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from council? Go ahead, Councillor Ellis. Yes, good morning, Ian. Uh, as other councillors have stated, it was good to hear your presentation. I'm sure you speak, uh, I'm sure you speak uh, on behalf of a lot of, uh, or how a lot of people in the municipality think regarding um, the issues where um, as you say, you have a piece of property that's uh, got acreage. Uh, it's not designated uh, uh, good farmland. Uh, I can relate to it until recently. I had a similar property as you and went through the avenues of trying to develop some lots there uh, uh, for to create homes um, for people. And I think that's where you're uh thoughts are and direction not necessarily around controlling camping and so on um but um 
I agree with the other councillors. Like we need to start and be more proactive here. I know we're restricted through the county and different bylaws. Uh, I, I experienced it myself when I tried to develop uh, the former farm that I had. Um, you know, all the restrictions, the Crow Valley um, stuff. It's just an endless, an endless line of hoops you have to jump through until you get to the point and say, well, it's not worth it. So I yeah. think our, our municipality have to take a leading role here. Um, and a part of our problem at the present time, staffing wise, uh, we're we're short staffed in our planning department. Uh, we've talked about having a, an ec economic development person for planning and economic development. Um, we talked about that a couple of council meetings ago. That's something that's lacking there. All those people would take that type of project on mm. as a challenge. And uh, we need to we need to be proactive, get some things in place, and not just follow along like our neighbors. Wait for somebody else to do it, and then we react to it. Uh, as was stated, but uh, good presentation. I'm sure there's lots of people out there uh, found it very interesting that are watching. Thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. Somebody's cell phone's going. Um, okay. Um, if, is there any other comments or questions? And uh, if not, I'll uh, look for a motion to receive this delegation. Um, thank you, Ian, for the presentation, and we will be. Thank you all. Um, so moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor. And that's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ian, and we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next delegation here is Chamber uh, Sherry Goschuk. Um, I think I've seen her name there. I guess it's under Chamber. Hmm. Hello. Good morning. Hello. You Good did morning. well. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so welcome, Sherry, and uh, thank you. You uh, you have your presentation here. I do, uh, I do. Um, I thought what I do is provide a, a little bit of a background here. There we go. Thank you. So, thank you very much for having me this morning. And um, where, as you know, many of you, I've had the pleasure of meeting you on a one on one basis, and that gave us the chance to do a Q&A and really delve into the details, but I'm delighted to be invited in and to present the campaign overview to Bob, uh, certainly the delegations on this call, and hopefully to lots of residents from the HPM area. So a little bit of background, the Hadlock Chamber of Commerce uh, partnered with Peterborough, the Kawarthas and Millbrook to come together and um, apply for shop local funding. It was a grant that the government of Canada had put together and asked the Ontario Chamber of Commerce to administer. The thinking being that the chambers representing local businesses would have a better sense of where the money ought to go to really drive economic development. And um, we did that. Um, I was really pleased to have worked with uh, largely the Peterborough Chamber and uh, we applied for $150,000. Uh, with a little bit of tweaking. Um, they came back to us because it was a regional effort. Uh, they agreed to uh, give us $170,000. And uh, I realized that sounds like a lot of money, but it's not. Not when you have a multifaceted advertising and marketing campaign that involves television, radio, print, social media marketing, and remote radio uh, events as well. So we've worked hard to make that budget go a long way. Okay. So right here, just manipulating my screen, just looking for the page down on this. Who's controlling it, is it? I know, I'm just trying to share my screen and it's, uh, you are not, start screen while the other person, oh, good enough. I think uh, Bianca just gave me controls, there we go. So uh, Bianca, it's indicating that you still have the, the driver's seat there. She could flip the screen for you if you like. Sherry. Okay, uh, if you could flip to the next page, it's actually a PDF, Bianca, so there we go. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight a couple of things here because it's important. Um, we were fortunate enough 
to connect with uh, a fantastic group called Outpost 379. And um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that group. It is a top tier creative and advertising firm. Um, they've, they've been successfully connecting people with brands and causes for the past 17 or so years. And they have uh, A-list clients like the National YW, YMCA, uh, Canadian Mental Health Association, the Ontario government, and so on. So we lucked out in working with them. And largely because they've recently relocated their head office to Peterborough. And they have a passion for improving local prosperity. That's what they do. And together, we've developed the Hometown Holiday Campaign. And as part of that initiative, what they decided to do was um, reach out and do some market um, you know, segment studies and that sort of thing to get a feel for what would be meaningful across the entire region and not just for Peterborough, but for all of us. And uh, they did a great job with that. Uh, what they found when they gathered up that market intelligence is that there is a strong sense of hometown pride in every community within our region, Peterborough and Porthos. And there is a certain nostalgia that goes along with that, that, you know, that feeling of particularly associated to the holidays where, you know, coming home to live, love, celebrate and play at home with your family members, that was a big driver behind this campaign. And the challenge or the secret sauce behind that was to figure out a way to add in the shop local, support local element to the mix. And I feel certain that this campaign, it satisfies that objective. If you could go down to the next slide, slide for me. And page down. Thanks, Bianca, that's great. Uh, firstly, that local that you saw up on the screen, it's fine, we don't go back to it, but um, it has a real retro feeling. And that is very purposeful. We wanted to tie into that, you know, Christmas season trees in the back, but we really wanted people to have that. Think back to better times, given the pandemic, we wanted them to think back to Roman, you know, like um, a Norman Rockwell picture where we're together with our families. We're out on the streets. We are strolling as opposed to scrolling uh, for our shopping needs. And that ties into this particular ad that you're seeing on screen. So we were fortunate enough uh, as part of this strategy to have TV ads airing on Chex and Global Peterborough. I'm hoping some of you have seen them. Anybody on council? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, excellent, good. Uh, that was part of the plan. Uh, certainly that, although it's only about 10% of our budget, that campaign reinforces what we're doing on radio. It reinforces what we've got on print and again on a social media. And so you'll notice that um, we've utilized Megan Murphy, just make sure I've got the name right. She's a very interesting person. She's, um, she's a local actor, she's a documentarian, she's a local radio personality on Classic Rock 107.9 and My FM 93.3. She's also the Peterborough, uh, the Peterborough United Way Chair. So she is uh, certainly recognizable and she has a strong social media following. We want to tap into that. And I think she did a great job with her ads and the ads that she's in um, ties into little versus big box shopping. So you'll see that um, we really focus on that whole, you know, so this year I decided not to shop in a big box store, but a little box store where I shop little box stores, I can find all kinds of cool things to shop. And the key messaging is this year, why not shop local and make this holiday a hometown holiday? And that messaging, that tagline, and make this holiday a hometown holiday appears in most of, if not all of our marketing and that strategy. The other was boots. And then imagine, you know, a young lady, she's strolling down the street with ambient roadway traffic noise, not too much. There's some Christmas carols. And she talks about strolling to find her presence as opposing to scrolling. And again, why not shop local and make this holiday a hometown holiday? Go to the next one for me. Thank you. Uh, to save on cost, we use those videos to capture still photos 
And those still photos have the same thing. This is my hometown, really reinforcing on that message that we owe it to our community, our neighbors, our friends who own and operate businesses to shop there as much as we can. It's hard to avoid big box because there's such a, a large cross section of, of products and services, but certainly a large part of what you do every day, whether it's your gas, your groceries, um, and other ancillary needs, you can get those local and we're encouraging that with our, our media as well. Um, for those that have already received the Havelock Rail, I've not, but I've seen my dad's. Uh, we have the full back page of the Havelock Rail and I think it looks great. I hope that you do too. It's a very clear message. And it's also appearing in Peterborough Examiner and Metroland across all the grocery stores, including ours. And that's again, to reinforce that message. Shop local, make this hometown holiday a good one. Go to the next one, thank you. Um, radio is the largest percentage of our advertising budget. And Outpost 379 have done a wonderful job negotiating the best uh, campaign offerings for us. Uh, we are advertising the Boots campaigns. You don't have the visual, but you've certainly got the sound. And again, I hope that you've heard them. I know I have across uh, My FM, the oldies, Pure Country 105, um, oftentimes playing while uh, Mike and Miles are on air because uh, Pure Country chose to roll out a hometown holiday tour. And of course, uh, the Wolf is playing them as well. Okay. Our next one. Terrific. Remote radio events. Uh, initially, in our campaign st strategic plan, we thought that each chamber would have one remote event. Um, but unfortunately, the government's approval came so late. It was supposed to come in early August. It got to us at the end of September. Um, by the time we had all of our ducks in a row, we were late in, uh, uh, well, we were early November, and we had two events already slated. In fact, one event, we organized a second. Um, the first one was the farmers and artisans uh, market, uh, the winter market, which was held November the 27th. And we were lucky enough to have my FM 96.7, the oldies, they were there, they ran um, a number of contests. Um, we had the local support of our retailers come out and provide $100 uh, gift cards. We also had, uh, Peter and the Corthas Economic Development had a staycation valued at $2,500 to draw people out, come to the market. And it was promoting the event, well, certainly a week before uh, the event happened. Um, it was perhaps the coldest, windiest day on Highway 7 that day. It was hard to keep all of the tent covers down. Um, overall, it was a really good event. And I spoke to the vendors. They were really pleased with those that, that were able to come in and um, following that, th this most recent Saturday, Christmas at, at the cottage uh, market was held and it was a great success. Considering that Sherry Semlich and uh, a member members of her team only had a very short period of time, I would say a little more than three weeks to pull all that together. Uh, the chamber played a supporting role. Uh, we gave her as we have resources. We worked with, again, chamber members to make sure that they had additional support and help, worked with the radio station to ensure that they had the support they need to get as much of the word out as we could. Um, I can tell you that through our social media marketing, and that's just boosting the ads on our social media, I reached 7,500 people within four or five days. And that's to the larger region, not just to have life. That's just me. That's not the radio station. That's not the uh, local social media uh, influencers. These are the individuals with large followings that, that the, the campaign enlisted the aid of. We actually compensated them to come and cover the, the event and tell all their you know, followers about it and encourage them to come out for the day. Um, Fresh was there as well, supporting the event. That's something that the cottage actually uh, set up themselves to ensure that they had good coverage. So, our goal was to have a successful event. Our goal was to ensure that people felt supported and we got so much more from, they've already started to schedule, or in fact, it'll be the first Saturday in December next year and they're lining up new vendors. Vendors are approaching them. So that's the kind of outcome we hope to achieve in this campaign and we've done that. If you could go to the next one. I'll have to um, pick up a little bit there, Sherry. We'll just have to pick it up just a little bit there. So. Okay, certainly. Um, in terms of the website, um, and this, again, this 
we are providing digital assets for all businesses, not just our chamber members. So what you're seeing on screen are banners. Those banners can be applied to the websites of any business in our area. Have luck, Belmont Methune. Uh, we also, if you go to the next slide, there are digital assets that are already available to them. So on a secure FTP site, we have the videos playing, which are the commercials. We have the, the uh, MP3, MP4 uh, audio uh, recordings of our radio uh, broadcasts, as well as all of the assets. So you can imagine we've got all kinds of great stuff that is editable and local businesses could use to promote their products, their services. And the next one. Gift tags, we can gloss over that quickly and go to the next. We did produce gift tags. Um, we should have produced more, but they are branded to our hometown holidays Havelock. And the next screen. Local chamber participation. Um, I can tell you right now in speaking with each one of the councillors, our deputy mayor, as well as deputy mayor Martin, um, we've received the support we'd hoped for. We really have. And we continue to get support in meeting with Councillor Hart. He recommended that we use this opportunity to get as much from the marketing campaign that we can. And so there's a street banner, uh, there's artwork already created. It is one of the things that I've passed across uh, to you. It, I think looks terrific. And we're proposing that we purchase 10 of the street banners that can be placed strategically along Highway 7 to remind our locals, but also those that are traveling through our community to stop and shop. And uh, it's shop local and make this a hometown holiday is the key messaging on those banners. And we will be the only chamber in our four chamber partnership that will have them. The total cost, including um, shipping as well as the HSD and what have you is $1,323. What the chamber is proposing is that we pay 50% of that cost and we're soliciting the council to pay for the other half. And you're wondering why should we do that? One, we don't have to do that, but we will miss the opportunity to promote local business. Not just those that have the spending power within our council reach in terms of the township, but also every driver that passes our community. And that's who we want to tap in. And we want to certainly have them stopping, shopping, using our resources, but paying for the privilege. And that's what that street banner will do, not just this year, but also every year that we continue to promote this particular campaign. And that is our goal. Uh, Outpost 379 was challenged to come up with a campaign that would not only uh, support existing shop local programs, but it would enhance them, it would elevate them, and that's what they've done. And so that's why I'm here today. It certainly provides you with an update, uh, talk a little bit about our initial success and to ask you for this commitment. Um, working with Councillor Hart, we have uh, already uh, determined the cost, we have the artwork done, and we're proceeding with this as a chamber, but we are soliciting 50% uh, to, to cover the cost from, from the council. So I hope that you do. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sherry. Um, yeah, so was that for this year? You were hoping to have those banners because we're yes, kind of we yes, yeah, we initiated it already. And you're you know, it's it's one thing where you're thinking, well, maybe you wait until next year. Um, but because this campaign it runs beyond Christmas, we're running this well into late February, and we have events that we're already planning uh, for January and February. So there really is the added advantage of the two additional months, and those banners will be used next year in the following years as well. All right. Well, thank you. Yes, and it has been a hit. Uh, both the markets, uh, the one at the cottage and the uh, farmers market, it were there was a lot of people there. Um, both Good. weekends had a little bit of miserable weather, but uh, I guess that goes with, <laughs> goes with the time of year. So, uh, yeah. but, uh, um, but it was good. It promoted our, our area. I think that might have even had some impact on our parade on Saturday. Um, it was advertised all day at the cottage. and That's right. We started at 9 a.m. <laughs> yeah, so um, Councillor Webb, did you have any input in this then? Um, no, Sherry pretty much uh, covered everything there. I'd just like to thank her for all her hard work on this. Um, as you can tell by the presentation, uh, she's put in a ton of work over the last uh, six months or so on this. And um, just speaking from uh, in terms of economic development, it's been it's been nice to work with the Chamber. It's, it's really nice to see the Chamber back on its feet and uh, headed in the right direction. I think um, 
having those two entities, us, our economic development and the chamber working separately, but yeah. together, together. Um, is, is going to work uh, a lot of, have a lot of good uh, results for this community, hopefully moving forward. So Sherry, once again, I'd just like to thank, uh, it's a pleasure working with you on this and uh, hopefully we'll get to work again in the future. The pleasure is mine. I've enjoyed it. And I agree with you. I think that uh, together we're much stronger than apart. Yeah. Um, is there any other comments or questions here from Council? Uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Uh, you're muted, Larry. Thought I had it on. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Sherry. Uh, your uh, your energy and uh, uh, excitement for the chamber is a plus, um, and what the chamber uh, is doing definitely is a plus for our municipality. So hats off to the whole group there. Yeah, the whole um, group. Very good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the the big question here is with regards to uh, helping pay for these banners. Um, we, uh, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you to Sherry. Um, the uh, chamber, have most of the businesses in Havelock signed up or is there just mm -hmm. a few as usual? Actually, we've taken a totally different approach. There's no sign up. We take it to them. So um, I've met with our businesses uh, and not just me. Um, our whole committee, our executive is reaching out and meeting with our local businesses. Um, we have, we've, the Royal We. Paul Stephen is crafting training to teach our local businesses how to use those digital assets so that they capitalize on their social media marketing. Um, and for those that are non-members, reaching out to them as well with the hopes that they'll see the value in what we're doing. They'll join our membership, you know, our membership in the future, but in the immediate that they take advantage of what the government's paying for. Um, so no, we've increased over the last six months our chamber membership has been increased by 33%. So I'm really proud of that. And I think that's hats off to Ray McCutcheon, who is our president and leader, Paul Stevens, who helps us in all things social media and guides us in the marketing side. Uh, we have Karen Puser, who is our, our treasurer. And of course, Tracy uh, has been acting as our advisor. So we've, we've had um, support certainly to make this happen. Okay, thanks, Sherry. Um, the only other thing is the, um... If you can't get all the membership involved, you know, with the businesses, that's what the fundamental, yeah, fundamentals of this is for. And uh, you know, we're, we're we're coming back to the taxpayer again. Yep. Um, yep. Because you got a grant, but evidently it must have been spent. Well, it's it's actually planned out over a number of months, right? Because it has to be spent before the end of January. But I can assure you. Um, and I ask you actually, speak to the businesses and, um, and talk to them. Um, we've reached out to them, we've communicated through email. Um, I find the most effective is one-on-one. -on -one. It just, it allows um, us to talk to them about their business and how it benefits them. Also how they can utilize what is free to them to boost some of their marketing efforts. And this, this is, of course, it's really tailored to that retail piece. It's harder for some of the other sectors to take advantage of that, but that'll be something else that we'll focus on in the new year. So how do we support those other sectors? But right now, the retail groups, your restaurants, your hair, you know, your salons, your, um, my goodness, you name it, anyone in the retail space should know about this at this point and should be utilizing it. And Paul Stevens, again, providing that training, I think you'll see more and more people um, with that hometown holiday message coming across. Okay, thank you. So I think, uh, you know, since this campaign started, I've seen a lot of excitement around the businesses. Uh, I think they're, uh, you know, I think it's going to make a difference, like Councillor Pomeroy was saying about getting them on board. Um, I've seen it happening already, and I'm sure that's yeah. part of the 33%. So um, mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor Dro had something, and uh, I think, so the number you're looking for here is around $650. Is that that's what it, yes, to split the cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right then, Deputy Mayor Drow, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mayor Murren. Thank you, Sherry, for a great uh, presentation. My question, I guess, is around the banners. You said there would be 10 banners? 
Um, we targeted 10 uh, because the chamber had a, a finite budget ourselves and we knew that we could afford that. Um, okay. So you have existing banners up, but we were thinking that we could place them strategically down the highway. Well, that was my next question. Um, <laughs> so how long will the banners be up? Well, um, we would like to see that holiday message extend beyond January into uh, mid, even late February. There, there are a few events that we think we can bolster in the community. Um, we have local businesses who are mulling over what they can do to create something. Uh, for example, you know, the Christmas at the cottage, that was a brainchild of Sherry Semlich. So we want more of that. And that's, that's the money, um, you know, demonstrating value. So obviously there was a lot, a lot of thought put into this. Do you not think the banners are gonna get lost as we come down when we get oh, so many banners? Goodness. I, I certainly hope not. Um, I know that Hart uh, and I talked about where should they be shipped? And I think we decided on, um, is it the garage Hart? I think it is. And um, when they do come down, I certainly, I'll make myself present so that we can grab a hold of them, keep them for next year. and. Hopes are that we can invest more in them next year as well. Okay, Councillor, are you done, uh, Deputy Mayor Duro? Sorry. Um, okay, Councillor Webb. Yeah, just to address uh, uh, the, the Deputy Mayor's point, I've spoken with uh, Ryan from uh, Parks. Ryan, as I see, is on there. Maybe if he wants to comment just about the banners and who will be putting them up and who will be storing them. Okay. Ryan, are you there? Or maybe Ryan's not there, but yeah, he's there. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor Webb's uh, comment about the uh, storage. Uh, typically, uh, we keep them at the basement of the town hall. Um, they're they're always kept safe in good condition, and uh, we'd be happy to do that if Council chooses to uh, move forward with that. So. Okay, and I, I, I'm not sure whether Deputy Mayor Drew, I think his point was about the number of banners and if they get lost as far as will you see them on the highway. Is that what you meant, Dave? Or That's exactly what I meant, Mayor. We have a <laughs> tremendous amount of stuff going on in number seven highway now. And yeah. uh, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to be negative, that's for sure, because everybody's doing a top-notch mm -hmm. job here. I yeah. just don't want to ruin our efforts by getting like going down George mm -hmm. Street or any other street in Peterborough. You just, you can't focus on the road and focus on everything that's on. Right, poles. right. So I, I, the one big question here would be, uh, Ryan, would they be able to be installed uh, if they can I don't know when they'll come in, but. Uh, um, yeah, about a week and a half. Okay. Um, Cause that's the next question is we don't mm -hmm. install them ourselves. We have to get an electrician in to put them up because of the hydro on the pole, um, it, so there's a little bit to it. Um, you know, I'm sure it could be done before Christmas, but there's a lot of work to do here. So I'm, I think I'm just going to go to council here and see what their thoughts are as far as funding this. We'd have to find it somewhere, and I'm not sure, uh, Bob, uh, who we would ask where it would come from, but because uh, it wasn't budgeted for. But it's $650, and I'm sure uh, um, we could find it somewhere. But Councilor Webb, go ahead. No, I was just going to make a motion that we um, give the chamber the 650 or 660, whatever 50% is. And um, we're getting near the end of the year. I imagine we still have a little bit kicking around in council initiatives that would cover that. Okay. All right. So I have them over here that, uh, that we support this initiative. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Yeah, I'll second the motion, Mr. Mayor, um, as well. Just a quick comment. Uh, this isn't just money we're handing away. This is an investment in our municipality. So yeah. $650 well spent. Okay. So I have a mover and a seconder. Um, Deputy Mayor Jarrell, go ahead, speak to the motion. Question through you, Mr. Mayor, on the motion. So I take it that uh, Ryan and his crew will be installing the, the banners. Is that correct? That's would do you see a problem getting them up, Ryan, uh, this year? Through Mayor, uh, through Mayor Martin, no, there shouldn't be an issue as long as they come in. Um, I can coordinate that with our local contractor. Comes in with the bucket truck to uh, take down the other ones and reinstall the new banners. Okay. So, 
So, so it's not just the through you again, Mr. Mears. It's not just the six hundred fifty dollars. It's the cost of the contract. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just want to be clear. That's all. Thank you. Okay. All right then. So we have a motion on the floor, and we do have a seconder. Is there any other questions around the motion? Um, I'm going to call the question then. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay, well, thank you, Sherry. Um, so we'll take care of that and um, hopefully we can get them as soon as possible and we don't get caught into that Christmas break there. So, um, Deputy Mayor Giroux, go ahead. So I'll make a motion that uh, whatever cost, it'll have to come in the council initiatives. Yeah, I think that was part of the motion there. Well, it wasn't, okay, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> Okay, so a motion that it comes from council initiatives, um, second or to that. I think I made that motion as part of the first motion, Jim. Yeah, it, it wasn't really clear, but uh, just to, we'll just confirm it there that it's coming from council initiatives. If you could second that heart. And, um, okay, all in favor of that motion. And that's carried. Okay, thank you, Sherry. That was thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, then. We're going to move on now. Uh, I don't have any other listed delegations here. Um, so we'll move into uh, staff reports for information here. Um, we do have um, a few there. Is there any questions around them? If not, I'll take a motion to receive them. Um, we have the report of fire incidents for October, November. Uh, the grant application that it was applied for for connecting link and the closed session meeting summary. So if everything's in order there, or if everything's understood, I'll just take a motion to receive those uh, reports. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Did you have a question there, Barry? Yeah, I just uh, was wondering why the officer's meeting was canceled two, two months in a row. Okay. Um, Ray, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Jim. Um, the one in October was canceled because people were busy and the one in November was because of the hunt. Okay. Okay. All right then. So I do have a mover and a seconder. All in favor of the uh, reports for information received? And that's carried. Thank you. Um, next, we have staff reports with follow-up action, and the first one there, Bob, is the uh, um, meeting schedule for 2022. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So this report presents to Council the uh, proposed meeting schedule for the, the year 2022. Um, a few items of note, uh, of course, October 24 is Election Day. So that factors into our meeting schedule for next year. So the final meeting uh, of this council will be in early November. The inaugural meeting of the next council will be on November the 15th. Okay. All right, pretty straightforward and hopefully we can stick to that. So um, what's council sauce? We get a motion to receive that uh, and adopt it. Move motion back to receive, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, the next report is uh, um, the Christmas holiday policy, uh, policy number 54. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, policy number 54 captures uh, what has been custom in the township for many, many years and simply formalizes it all in a policy. Okay, and what's council thoughts there? Uh, it's something that we do every year. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giro, go ahead. To you again, Mayor uh, Martin. Uh, thank you, Bob, for and those involved to bring this policy forward. I think it's long overdue. We hash this out every year, and now that it's in a policy, it's going to make it that much more easier for council. So, at this time, Mayor Martin, I will make a motion to uh, approve the recommendation. All right, thank you. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux that we approve the go with the recommendation. Uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Pomeroy? 
With a question. Yeah, go ahead. You're seconding it. Yes. Okay. Um, with a question, the uh, the amount for for uh, vouchers for Christmas has been forty dollars for years, and uh, with the price of everything going up the way it has, I would like to see us up that to fifty dollars because uh, I, I would like to show some appreciation for for our people that are, are receiving these these vouchers for Christmas. I know some of them are, are most of them are well appreciated and you can't buy much for $40 now. So okay. I would like, I would like to see it go to 50. So go with the rec recommendation with amended the uh, amount for the certificates to $50 from 40. Um, so the, um, it was moved that we uh, go with this. It would have to be. Is that okay with the um, with the mover? No way. Yes, that's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so we've amended it to um, fifty dollars for the uh, vouchers. Um, all right then. So we have a mover and a seconder to that. Any questions or comments around that? All in favor? Oh. Go ahead, Councillor Ellis, and then just Councillor quick, Rebels. Sorry, just a quick question. Was that the Grinch that spoke up there a minute ago? Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> okay. All right, then. And Councillor Webb, did you have anything with regards to the motion? Okay, then. So I'm going to call the question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you. All right, then. We're going to move into correspondence. And uh, we have one action item here, and this is with regards to Jack's Lake Weed Warrior. Um, there's some concerns up on Jack's Lake around uh, um, a spraying that's going on. Um, so I just, uh, at first blush here, I was thinking that this, we should speak to FOCA maybe and, uh, and see what this is. Uh, it's the first I've heard of it actually. So um, it might be something that we uh, get some more information on uh, and, uh, and maybe bring it back. I don't know what council's thoughts are here, but uh, Councillor Webb, go ahead. And then yeah, if, you're, if you're looking for a motion to uh, direct staff to contact FOCA and uh, gain more information on, um, I guess, this letter and the background to it. Yeah, that, that's what I would suggest uh, um, to get more information on it. I'll make that motion. Okay, that's moved by Councillor Webb. Deputy Mayor Duro, you had a a question before you second it there, speak to the motion. I will second that motion and uh, with the, with a question or comment that once we find out that information and it's factual, which I do believe that it is for sure, uh, we would have staff contact and support this, not only from our own township, but through the county and have a letter go to the necessary members of parliament once we find out the information yeah okay then yeah so it's uh so this will come back to us once we get some clarification from polka and anybody else that's uh, familiar with this we can talk to the association too and uh um and bring it back to us so i do have a, mo a mover and a seconder is there any other questions or comments around this uh article okay i'll call the question all in favor and that's carried. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have a, uh, another item there. Uh, this is the transition plan for the Otonabe region uh, conservation. These are coming out from all the uh, conservation authorities uh, with regards to the provincial uh, mandate that came out. So we're, uh, they're all very similar. The crows is similar to this one too. So. Um, so I, just a motion to receive the, the balance of the correspondence would probably be suitable. Moved by Councillor Webb. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor. And that's carried. Thank you. All right then. So uh, next we have uh, committee liaison reports. And uh, as far as the county, uh, there wasn't a lot. It was a very short meeting at the county last uh, last week. So. Uh, um, 
there isn't a lot to report again. So I think things are starting to wrap up for Christmas. There's a lot of other things going on, but uh, as far as anything to do with HBM, uh, I think it would be, uh, I don't think there's much to report. So um, we'll move into the, uh, to the activity reports there. And uh, um, Councillor Pomeroy, you have a uh, library board meeting on the 25th and a couple of sets of minutes there. Yeah, I'll make a motion we approve those. Okay, moved by Councillor Pomeroy that we approve the minutes from the September 16th and the October 21st uh, library board meeting. Second the motion, okay. Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? And that's carried. Um, next, Deputy Mayor Giroux, you have uh, um, Eastern Trails Alliance and uh, you had a meeting with the, uh, the county and the Snowmobile Club with regards to the Burnt Dam Bridge. Yes, I did. Uh, we had a brief meeting at, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. We, um, we had a brief meeting at uh, the Burnt Dam Bridge uh, involved where Peterborough County, uh, Peter Nielsen and uh, Ryan Weir, myself, I think I was there mostly for the EOTA, um, uh, the Snowmobile Club, OFSC, uh, our the uh, director, the president from District Two, along with the, our president, uh, Peter Johnson and Glenn uh, Carmen from the trails of the Ontario Federation Snowball Club, our, our local club. And it was a very brief meeting and what the county uh, portrayed to us is they are looking to divest themselves of that bridge. I mean, uh, the county council had a, got a report back and I think it was June of this year, uh, that report wasn't, uh, I didn't, I don't think went to HBM, but county councilors got it. Um, they made no, uh, they said that they realized that that's their bridge. They, they didn't. Uh, they did not shy away from that fact. They said it was on Crown land, but they are looking to either divest the bridge to some partners or a partner. And uh, they would, it's, it was just a brief meeting to say that, that this has got to come back again to county council. And if they can find partners, and what they meant by that props was two different things. Uh, they will put money into the bridge to bring it up to standards. What standard, I don't know. There's about three standards they will use. They realize that um, it is not a highway bridge. It's not a township road bridge. So it was a brief meeting and um, just a very preliminary meeting and there will be discussions after that. I, my side of it, um, as far as the EOTA is concerned, that's not a traveled uh, traveled EOTA route, so it's not likely that EOTA is going to going to partnership in any way on that bridge. But the Snowmobile Club in, indicated that they that's one of their main trails, and they were interested in talks. So I did receive a, an email from the president of the club. And I said that I'm sure the council will keep the the um, lines of communications open, but it was very brief and uh, just the start of whatever happens from here. Bob, you can step in here at any time, and if I've missed anything, uh, you can let council in on me. And but but I'm not finished with EOT, uh, Mr. Mayor. So after Bob's finished, I'll go back to that. Okay. Now, through you, Mayor Martin, um, I think Deputy Mayor Giroux summarized uh, that meeting very well. Uh, it was a brief meeting. It was a site meeting at Burnt Dam Bridge itself. Um, the discussion basically, as Deputy Mayor Giroux said, the, the county is looking to divest itself uh, of that asset. Um, how that happens is really the discussion going forward. So uh, perhaps we'll involve the snowmobile club and or the township um, and those are discussions that will have to take place. Uh, obviously, ultimately, it'll be a council decision 
uh, both here at the township and at the county level. Um, but this is a very preliminary right now. We are waiting for more information back uh, from county staff regarding the uh, possible standards that the bridge could be brought to. Um, it is not a traveled highway, so it will be a reduced standard of, of some sort for recreational use. And uh, we'll wait to see where that goes, but uh, lots more discussion to come yet with council. Yeah, and I might add to that, this started last term of council and my predecessor, uh, Ron Giroux, he, uh, he spoke to it uh, and myself uh, at county council in the last term on how important this bridge is for economic development to have locked on on Methuen. So um, with my involvement with the Snowmobile Club in the past, uh, I'm well aware of the uh, what was needed there. And uh, I think the, the county is trying to work with us and do what we can and that's good news uh, you know i don't think anybody wants to see it go away um, it's totally understandable they have a few of these bridges in the county that they're trying to get rid of that uh, don't go anywhere as far as uh, for county roads but uh, this one here is important to have locked on up and we're going to do what we can to uh, make sure it is brought up to a standard and, and um, it sounds like that's what they're trying to do too so that's good news so um, Okay, Deputy Mayor Drew, go ahead. Oh, well, go yes, ahead, I, Deputy Mayor Drew. On. Okay. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. You had a question with regards to the Burnt Dam Bridge then? Yeah, just, just a quick one here. Um, I'm trying to understand. I, I guess I understand where the counties come from. They're trying to get rid of a, a major cost with these old bridges. But uh, what I don't understand, and maybe Bob can clarify this, is how they can legally just say that they're going to divest of the bridge that they own. Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So this, this bridge is uh, one that was assumed many, many years ago. Um, it is not to the typical standard of a county bridge. It's smaller in size. Um, it is not considered a traveled highway. It is on MNRF property. So there are a number of these bridges throughout the county that the, uh, the county is now looking to divest themselves of. So they legally, yes, they can do that. Thank you. Well, hopefully they'll, they'll uh, maintain it or upgrade it to a different standard so it's still usable um, for the traffic that needs to use it to get back and forth there. Um, just a different standard, I guess, is what I'm saying. But would be great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and I, I did bring it up to the uh, to Crow Valley because uh, I thought they were using it to do log adjustments, but uh, they said they don't really have have to use it either. Um, it they do it from the other side of the bridge, so it's not a. So hopefully we can get our part some partners on with this, and I, I think the OFSC is going to be the biggest partner in it, but. Uh, um, like Bob touched on there, m and um, and others, maybe we can bring into it in hydro, hopefully, but uh, um, it's a work in progress and uh, it's it's happening all over. It's it's your efficiency thing there, Councilor Ellis. Council Dave and I have to put our county hat on when we're up there, but it's hard to balance between county and, and HBM because we know how important this is. So we'll work on it and hopefully it comes to a good conclusion. So um, Deputy Mayor Drill, go ahead on, on your EOTA. Uh, just one final thing on that. I neglected to say our manager of uh, public works did attend that meeting also. So he is well aware of what was said that day and and uh, so on. So I didn't want to leave Peter out. He was certainly at that meeting. Um, in regards to the EOTA, I mentioned to Bob uh, briefly, I think it was last week. Um, I think we should be... Uh, um, proactive on letting the municipality, uh, the people know in the municipality that we are now into December and our ATV bylaw states that no ATVs or side-by-side off-road vehicles will be allowed on HPM uh, roads during the winter from December 1st to April the 1st, I believe it is. And uh, this is happening. So I think it would be proactive to, if uh, staff were to write a kind letter to uh, uh, the 
Peterborough County um, detachment and remind our frontline officers here that work particularly in HBM that uh, this bylaw is in effect. After all, they promoted this bylaw through the county. The county liked the bylaw. They picked HBM bylaw uh, through the rest of them they went through. So just a reminder that there's, they're not supposed to be on our roads now. Uh, there are exemptions for trappers and uh, farmers, so they're covered. But for recreational business, uh, sport, through those months, they're not allowed on the roads. And I think, to be fair to those, we should remind them that this bylaw is in effect. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and I might suggest maybe similar to our parking on the side of the road in the winter, we maybe have to come up with a social media post that uh, that states that uh, the ATVs are closed for the season. Um, there might be something we can come up with there to help share around too. So, um, okay, thank you. Um, next is mine there as far as conference calls and various uh, meetings. Uh, lots of meetings last week with, uh, um, as I said, the county council, there wasn't too much there other than the biggest thing is gonna be the, uh, uh, we had a bit of discussion around the uh, um, MPAC and the assessment, uh, the reassessment is not till 22, 23 is the proposal. And so that'll mean the reassessments haven't happened since 16. So there's gonna be quite a jump in the future, but, uh, um, and then, uh, that day was quite a day it was 10 or 12 hours on this thing uh i had a bunch of sub meetings with the county they said it was going to be a short meeting so they put three more in there to kind of fill the day up and uh and then i had dave smith that night and dave smith was all around the uh what's happening with the uh it's it's like as always it's around the COVID and uh things that have been happening and uh the vaccine passport certificates uh the mayors on that call did say that uh, with the province putting out that there's going to be there could be they could be lifted in January or maybe March um, wasn't realistic and they need to uh, get the uh, proper message out because they're pretty well saying it probably won't happen but uh, um, but they're putting some misinformation out there so it was it was said at that meeting that we should get the proper message out so people understand that uh, it doesn't give a false uh, false message but uh, um, other than that I did have a ton of uh, things with the uh, with this uh, hometown uh, holiday I was out at the uh, um, two uh, things that happened the markets and did a couple of radio interviews um, each weekend and uh, they were uh, it was really well done I mean the people were happy as cold as it was the uh, snow last weekend the weekend before was the wind but uh, um it went over really well and it was nice to see everybody all excited uh you know preparing for christmas and uh then we had the santa claus parade i did have a float in there um for celebrate havelock uh phil ended up going away so i kind of got stuck with it but uh that was a cold night but there was a lot of cars went through there i don't know how many went through there but there had to be a thousand it uh um i said i wish we had been counting because uh there was people from all over um, I heard as far away as Durham region because there's no parades around so everybody was coming um, to whatever they could find and uh, um, we had over 30 floats in there or the lions did and it was uh, um, when you compare it to some of our neighbors um, it was it was an excellent parade and job well done so um, if you weren't in the Christmas spirit before the last couple of weeks you should be now um, so but that's all I had here to report in uh, in this uh, liaison report. So with that, I would take a, a motion to uh, receive the uh, reports. Um, moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. With, with, with a comment, with a comment. Go ahead. I did get a phone call. Of, oh, I'm seeing approximately 6.30 and uh, the person on my cell, the other end of my cell had come into town and said, has there been an accident? We've been sitting in a spot for 25 minutes. So <laughs> it was a great parade. Oh, yeah, a lot of people were an hour and 20 minutes in line. So um, yeah, quite a quite a lineup, almost out to the dump. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, okay. Um, all right, so we had a mover and a seconder, all in favor? And that's carried.
All right, next uh, we had, uh, I don't have any written notice of motion. Is there any oral notice of motions coming forward? Seeing none, we'll move into new business. And uh, Deputy Mayor Drew, you had a few things on here in new business. I'm having a hard time to find my own <laughs> report. Okay. The first one on there was a the long term care update. I can't even find them. All right. Uh, yeah, that was that was one of them. I, I just wondered uh, if Bob could uh, give us a refresher or if we've had any new news on the long term care. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So the latest development uh, uh, regarding the long-term care home, uh, a letter has been sent to the proponent uh, to seek an update with respect to uh, when the construction may begin um, and where the development agreement with the province is at. So we have sent that letter. Uh, we are waiting a response and we'll certainly share that with council when, uh, when that response is received. Thank you for that, Bob. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Ellis had a question around that. De uh, Deputy Mayor Drove, go ahead, Councillor Ellis. You're muted. Through you, uh, Deputy Mayor Jerome. Uh, the, in reference to the letter that was sent, uh, I believe in our previous council discussions, there was going to be uh something voiced in the letter that the extension uh, regarding the extension was that in, not included in the letter it's closed yeah yeah it was included in the letter it was from the closed session so so uh, yeah so the big thing the big thing around it was the development agreement and, and a verbal talking to brad smith the uh, Two or three weeks ago, um, he still hasn't received the development agreement from the province, so um, that'll come forward uh, eventually. Here we're hoping. So it seems to be a little bit of tug of war here. So, anyways, that's all we had with the uh, um, with the LTC right now. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Durrell. You're you're thank, next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you, Green. And uh, I hope Ryan's still with us. Uh, I uh, would kind of like an update in regard to the, the arena rentals up to date. And the reason I asked for this is, uh, first of all, I'd like to know, I think council should know, but I've heard some great stuff that uh, some of the school classes might be coming over and uh, participating in, in, our, in, our, in our arena. And that's uh, great news. So Ryan, if you could give me a, a brief update on where we stand with our rentals, that'd be great. Thank you, uh, through Mayor Martin to uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux. Um, yeah, so we successfully opened up on October 13th. Uh, to date, we've had 84 hours of rentals. Um, the, the majority of those rentals are, uh, are youth rentals. Um, and yes, to further to your comment, we did receive confirmation that the school is, has booked uh, four different dates. So they're coming once a month, uh, starting in December and ending in March. So the last one will be uh, the last day of school, the Thursday, March 10th, before the March break, So, which is pretty excited. So we've, uh, we've began making preparations for them to come. Uh, typically, we lend out skates and helmets and things like that. So uh, we've got all of our, our uh, COVID-19 protocols in place and, and uh, had good communication with the school that way. So um, yeah, it's, it's looking positive and we're, and we're looking forward to having, to having them over here. So. Thank you, Ryan. And I might add there, Ryan had flowed across from me at the parade and it was unfortunate because everybody kept looking at the Zamboni and missing my float. So um, <laughs> it was kind of uh, one of those things, everybody's pointing over there and driving right by the Celebrate Havelock one. So anyways. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. <laughs> so, okay, uh, Councillor Pomeroy and I think Councillor Webb, did you have your hand up? Yeah, go ahead, Barry. Yep, okay. Through you, Mr. Mayor to Ryan. Um, the hours per week, you gave us a total amount of hours. How many hours a week is the ice rented? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin to Council Palmer, roughly 10 hours a week. Okay, thank yeah. you. 
Okay. All right then. Uh, Councillor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say further to the deputy mayor's point. Um, the few times I'm over there with my son with minor hockey, I've noticed there's uh, quite a few more rentals coming from Norwood to Norwood minor hockey. I don't know, Brian, maybe you want to comment on that. But there's other communities starting to use our arena as well. Through you, Mayor Martin, to Councillor uh, Webb's comment. Uh, yeah, we recently received uh, quite a number of rentals from Norwood minor hockey. Uh, they actually have uh, uh, Tuesday nights here. They 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 take two or three hours, uh, and we're we're picking up other uh, random hours uh, throughout the week with them as well. So um, at this point, we're we're taking all the bookings that we are requested, and we're making the most of of uh, of the time that we're that uh, that we have to to offer to the community. So. Uh, we're not turning down any turning down any rentals at this point so okay you're right all right thank you thanks ryan okay deputy mayor Giroux, go ahead. Okay, here i go again i seem to be long-winded today i apologize for that mayor martin um the lending gifting or money policy i i think we, we council should talk about this uh in in budget talks, I just don't want it to fall off the table. We had an example this morning. Um, normally, if there's a, it, just to give us an idea of how we're going to handle the requests that come in, council should, in my opinion, set a set a figure and try and deal with it. Just to set a policy. I'm not putting Bob on the spot here. I hope in it by any means this morning, but I'd like perhaps he could speak to it. Through you, Mayor Martin, uh, I thank Deputy Mayor Jarrell for his question um, and perfect timing. This morning is an example. Uh, the request we received earlier in this council meeting um, is an example of, uh, I think, what you're addressing. So I think going forward and at budget time, uh, staff will bring forward uh, a policy to address these types of, of recommendations or these types of requests, and we could handle them within a, a specified account or a specified amount of money um, would be set aside for these types of things. And I think it would give it some structure and it would, uh, it would be uh, far more transparent for council and it would be planned in the budget. Thank you for that, Bob. Good idea. I only have one more, uh, Mayor Martin, and then I'll turn the floor back to you. Uh, if, I ask uh, the outdoor arena regulations for the COVID. Now I realize this changes day by day from our Ontario government, but I thought for our viewers this morning uh, and those that may be uh, on online this morning and the viewers after, if Ryan could give uh, an update on our outdoor arena, I hope we get going and it's a great success again this year. Um, just so people don't say, oh, can I go? Can I go? So, Brian, if you could give us an update on that also, I'd appreciate it. I think he's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can carry on. Yeah, um, I'm sure he'll be back in. If he jumps back in, we'll get his answer for that, uh, Dave. Thank so, you. Through you. Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin. He's. Yep. He's just attempting to rejoin the meeting. We'll see if he's had there success. He there he is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that. I don't know what happened. I... Do you want me to repeat that, Brian? Ryan? Yes, please. I didn't hear any of that. All right. Just a quick uh, refresher for those that are on our video this morning. And uh, for those that may be watching it after, I, I think it'd be nice to give the public an idea of our outdoor rink and the COVID. Um, it's outdoors, so we really don't have to do too much about that. But I think, I know that the regulations change every day, but if you could give us a quick update on what's gonna happen out there. I hope the rink, uh, the arena gets going and it's a great success, but just yeah. for people's peace of mind, maybe you could give us an, an update. Yeah, sure. So through Mayor Martin to Deputy uh, um, Mayor Jarreau's comments regarding the outdoor rink. Uh, been in conversation with Dave Sharp, uh, been in communication with him, uh, making plans. He's got it all set up and the 
and uh, between uh, himself and a few of his volunteers in our uh, fire department, uh, the rink was filled on Sunday with hopes of uh, having the kids and open to the public to skate on that uh, through the Christmas holidays. Um, so in terms of COVID protocols, it's, uh, it's considered a park amenity uh, similar to the use of a playground. So it's an unstaffed uh, uh, facility. Uh, so at this point, there's no restrictions on capacity limits. Um, it's outdoors. You're not required to wear a mask, although it's encouraged that you do. Um, basically, it's open to the public to use. Uh, restrictions have lifted uh, since last year where there was some capacity. Um, there was capacity restrictions last year, which we would never have met them anyways. It was around like 50 people um, on the rink at one time. Typically, the most that you'd see out there is 15 to 20 people. So, um, yeah, we're excited to uh, to work with Dave again this year and get this uh, and get the ring open for the kids to use. Uh, it was well used last year, so uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to having that available to the community. Thank you, Rhett. Hey, um, so that's good. Good information. Um, Next on the on here for new business with George Street, and the reason I had that on there is uh, back in 2019 we uh, we applied for that grant to do George Street, and we weren't successful. Um, since then, we've reapplied to a new grant here in the in the fall there, and we're still waiting to hear back from it. But in the meantime, I was just going to ask council or make sure council realizes that the biggest holdup here is us. Um, we're the ones that have the most money into this thing. It's not a county thing. The county only is responsible for the top of it. The expensive part is what's underground. So I was just going to suggest that you know we put this into budget discussions for a plan B because um, you know we need to be prepared. If it, if it's not successful again, um, we need to start moving forward with it. And there's two ways of going about it. I've been in discussions with the county and asking what the best way to do this would be. And, um, you know, if you go into a shave and pave and just forget what's underground, it's a waste of money. And I think uh, we'd be better to come with a with a plan here. And I think in, in the budget, we need to talk about it uh, on options to get this thing moving. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get the grant and everything will be good. But even in the grant, it doesn't cover sewer. So um, it's going to be a costly venture. But it has to be done. I, I think everybody's seeing George Street, and uh, you know it needs a lot of work done. And I think we're going to have to do our part to get it moving and get the county moving on it. But they're they're basically going to be waiting for us. And uh, if we don't have a plan in place on how to fund it, um, it's going to be sitting there for years to come. So, or they're going to end up just paving it and uh, doing a quick repair, and it's still not going to be to the you know, to the, what we would like, the level of, uh, that we would like to have George Street at. So, um, so I'm just asking today that, uh, you know, to think about this for the, for budget discussion. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'd be able to authorize Peter Lawson to work with the county to get a plan in place. And, and even if it's done in stages, like we planned, it might be three or four stages. Um, we should get something going. That that culvert under the railway tracks over there was the biggest cost. Um, we can continue to work with the province on that. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, the old pricing was $9 million to do uh, this project. And I think $2 million was the culvert. So um, we're going to have to uh, see how we can get it rolling. And we don't want to do the mistake we did last time. We're better to start at the at the culvert and work our way back up, I think, because last time we worked our way down and we ran into problems. So, um, so anyway, that's all I had this on there for today is to uh, get council thinking about uh, budget discussions and uh, um, how we can get this thing moving because something has to be done. Anybody that travels it can see that and it's, it's not getting any better. It's, uh, they do a good job at taking care of what's there, but uh, um, it needs to get something going. So. That's all that was on here for today is uh, we're going to be getting into budget discussions here shortly and uh, uh, we need to come up with something for that. So that's just my thoughts. And um, so is there anything else in new business? Uh, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Well, to you, I guess, and the rest of council. I've been approached by 
some jammers this past week and they uh, would like to go back into the town hall. Evidently they've had an offer from the Lions to go down in the basement, but it's not feasible for some of the people. Some of them are crippled up a wee bit. And uh, anyway, further to that, those conversations with uh, two or three of them, I've, uh, I've, I went back to see John and ask him, you know, what would be the easiest way to get them back in the town hall? And he said, well, he said, it's up to council, but he said the only restriction he has on it is the ramp. So it'd have to have uh, an engineer drawing which he said uh, Trevor Day, I guess, already has the um, draw or the, the figures on 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 the drawings um, and built the specs, and he will take he will lift the order that's on there. So anyway, I just had to bring that up with council because there is some of these people I'll. For how many years now have they used the town hall and they're not at all pleased with going to the arena, especially when uh, they've been told they can only use the basement. So it, uh, and I asked him, well, you know what, well, we got lots of money, he said, you know, the one chap. So I said, well, I'll bring it back to council and uh, maybe we should have a meeting with the jammers as a council and see how we can help them out. We seem to be helping every, everyone else out in town that comes with their handout and it is our building. So we do have some kind of an obligation here, I think. And I've had jammers approaching me too, Councillor Pomeroy. I had one last week tell me that a councillor told them to go and get uh, pricing on it. And if they put the money into it, uh, we would go for it. And I said, no, 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 don't do anything until council <laughs> talks about it. Um, so I totally agree. Um, it was in the budget last year and we pulled it to that ramp. Um, so I think we should be directing facilities to look into this, to see what we got to do and, uh, um, to know what it's going to cost us. I think the price that came in at the budget last year is probably, <laughs> it's probably a lot more than that now. Um, so it might be something for discussion. I don't think we need to meet with the jammers again. We know what they want. Um, it just it's up to council if they're in favor of doing this you're right there was some accusations out there that there was mold in there and there was things going on with the town hall um the ramp is the big thing to get it open and there's a leak in the roof um there's a leak there's some shingles that have lifted on the west side of the roof um they need to be dealt with too but uh, this is a council thing it's up to council if they want to get it open again i totally agree with you um but uh that would be what we would be looking for here in the future is uh, what council wants to do with that building. Um, so, so I'll just open it up to council here uh, for Councillor Pomeroy thing, unless you're, what's council's thoughts there? Councillor Ellis? Uh, <clears throat> kind of a, a question, uh, uh, a little bit away from the comments from uh, Councillor Pomeroy, um, what I would like to know is who's telling the jammers that they can't use the community center upstairs. We already committed to allowing them there, regardless of whether we reopen the uh, town hall with the new ramp, and, and that's not going to happen overnight. So what I'd like to know is how the jammers are being told or why the jammers are being told that they're not allowed to use the facility. I, I have no idea. That'll be a discussion for later. I'm sure it's probably around leaving their equipment there, but uh, um, that will be a question that's part of for the future. So I think for right now, unless somebody wants to make a motion, um, that was just a, for information there that the jammers would like to move back in there. And I think we heard that at the meeting that they had here. So um, I think it would be just a motion to receive the uh, new business unless somebody you know, and we can have a motion come back at the next meeting if we like. Deputy Mayor Giroux, go ahead. 
I will make that motion with a comment. Okay. Motion to receive with a comment. So okay. last week I had a visitor at my home uh, who was a Lions Club member. And he said that a number of jammers met and walked downstairs in the basement of the arena. And they uh, said that they, that was a lovely spot. So I think there's a communications gap between somebody. So I'm not prepared to move forward on anything until I find all the pertinent information. There. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay, and I've so I moved by Deputy Mayor Duro that we received the uh, um, new business report and seconded by Councillor Webb. All any questions or comments around that? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, then. Um, all right. Everybody. Go ahead, Barry. I, I got another <clears throat> another one here. Um, the um, it's only short. EA treatment for the treatment plant. Where where are we sitting with that? Um, Bob, can you answer that, please? When it's not on the agenda, it kind of throws things off. Yeah, right? I know, I know, but I mean, he he does have some of this stuff in his head there. That, I'm sure sometimes. <laughs> yes, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, that there will soon be a public meeting with respect to the environmental assessment that needs to be done and completed. Uh, that information will be forthcoming soon. Uh, it will be a public meeting for everyone to attend. Thanks, Bob. All right, then. Thank you. So we've uh, closed out on new business and uh, um, our next uh, thing here is a bylaw uh, establish the dates and times for regular council meetings in 2022. Uh, moved by Councillor Webb, seconder. Councillor Ellis, all in favor of that? And that's carried. Okay, then. Um, confirming bylaw. Um, uh, motion for the confirming bylaw moved by Councillor Webb. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. And a motion to adjourn this part of the meeting is moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? And that's carried.